Being an orphaned girl who had just lost both parents, Uncle T offered to train Amaka in the city. The extended family members had rejoiced and said words of prayers for Uncle T. Like a lamb being led to the slaughter, Amaka innocently smiled each time Uncle T barged into her room and she was naked. It was as if he knew whenever she had taken a bath and was always on time. However, Amaka was only nine years old, so she couldn't see through Uncle T's cloak of darkness. It started one day when Uncle T bought panties as gift for her. Little did Amaka know that Uncle T had his motives. She collected the panties with beams of smells scattered across her face. So, when he asked her to wear the panties before him, Amaka did so without flinching. Uncle T keenly watched as she dressed and undressed while smacking his lips to the swaying of her tiny waist. Her nipples were so voluptuous in his eyes and called out to him. Unwilling to see Amaka for his knees and the little girl she was, Uncle T shoved her to the bed and raped her. That was the beginning of hell for Amaka. One would think Uncle T had his fill, but no, he incessantly raped her day and night. Young and ignorant, Amaka told nobody. Who could she have told? She was always locked up at home. Each time people called from the village to ask about her well-being, Uncle T threatened to beat her to death if she dared say the word. Regarded as the family's messiah who had taken up the responsibility of his niece, everyone respected Uncle T and held him in high esteem. Stories abound of rich people who had no interest in the welfare of their poor relatives. So yes, Uncle T was indeed a messiah, or so everyone thought. Days passed and Uncle T continued his evil deeds without any iota of remorse. Amaka got no education and was denied access to even sunlight. She was locked up in a room which was dark and the light was only turned on when it was time to party, as Uncle T liked to say. She had put on the light one day when she felt something trickle down her thighs, but Uncle T gave her the beating of her life and she never tried it again. Perhaps she got used to the darkness as she could play with her imaginary friends after the act had been done. These friends often comforted her and tried to make her smile, but she couldn't. Whenever she tried to smile, she would remember Patrick, one of Uncle T's friends, and her stomach churned. Patrick not only raped her, but he constantly smiled whenever he was at it. Amaka knew his name because he made her say it as he moved in and out of her. Patrick was a dirty man with a stinking body odor and there was a day she couldn't stand the stench. So she puked all over him. As expected, Uncle T came to the rescue with thunderous slaps and punches thrown at her face. One of her imaginary friends had told her that the body odor was the source of Patrick's wealth as he was an occultist, but Amaka had laughed and that was the only time she ever laughed. The thought alone amused her and she couldn't bring herself to repeat the process. Once a girl with a promising future in the village, though with poor parents, she was now less than a slave. Uncle T shared her with his demented friends who took turns repeatedly raping her. Countless times she had gotten pregnant and Uncle T never hesitated to make available pills for her. The pills were to discard the pregnancies 
he repeatedly chanted when Amaka gathered courage to ask him why she bled each time she took the pills. It didn't take long before her imaginary friends began to have series of long talks with her. These usually took place when she was alone in the darkness. To Amaka, the friends were real and they were all she had. They reminded her about her reason for coming to town. They rebooted her memories of every moon that passed through the lips of Uncle T and his friends each time they were in between her legs. It didn't take long before her imaginary friends began to show up in the light and whisper to her while she was being raped. She could feel their touch on her skin comforting her and trying to drag her mind away from the brutal pain she was in at the moment. What crime had her late parents committed? She thought about things they had possibly done to Uncle T which would make him hate her so much. Finally, she concluded that Uncle T was just a crazy son of a bitch who had no control over his penis. He was so brainless that he didn't know where to put it and what line not to cross. It didn't take long for Amaka to nurture ideas in her mind. The supposed father figure in her life had taken everything away from her. A man who put himself in a position to protect her. The pain and guilt were too much for Amaka to bear. Guilt, yes, because she blamed herself for having been unable to read the signs. On one fateful night, she walked into Uncle T's room and repeatedly stabbed him while he slept. The past seven years had taught her that the scars of being brutally ravished every night took forever to heal. Amaka had no idea how long forever would be and had no intention waiting around to find out. On instinct, she thrust the bloody knife into her heart and drove it down through to her belly. Alas, she found peace, or so she thought. We will never know.